What was the craziest black market at your high school? It started innocently enough. Our school cafeteria served the kind of food that could survive a nuclear apocalypse. Cardboard pizza, mystery meat burgers, and salads that looked like they had seen better days. The hunger for something edible, something that didn't taste like regret, led to the birth of an underground snack market. I stumbled upon this culinary rebellion during my sophomore year. It all began with Jenny, the mastermind behind the operation. She had an uncanny ability to smuggle in contraband snacks from the outside world. Snickers, Doritos, Skittles, you name it, Jenny had it. And for a price, you could get your hands on these forbidden treasures. Jenny's locker became the epicenter of this illicit trade. It was like a secret speakeasy, but instead of alcohol, it was stocked with snacks that could rival the finest gourmet cuisine. To gain access, you had to know the secret knock and the password of the week, which Jenny changed to keep things spicy. Word spread like wildfire, and soon, everyone was in on the snack black market. The demand was so high that Jenny had to enlist a team of trusted associates to help with distribution. I was lucky enough to become one of her snack dealers. Our dealings were discreet. We operated in the shadows, making exchanges between classes like undercover agents. I would pass a bag of Skittles to a hungry customer while pretending to tie my shoe, and just like that, another transaction was complete. It was a delicate dance, a ballet of snacks. The competition was fierce. Other students caught wind of our snack empire and tried to set up their own black market operations. It was a snack turf war, with rival factions vying for the coins of the student body. Prices fluctuated, and alliances were formed and broken over the course of a single school week. One day, the principal got wind of our delicious rebellion. Rumors about the snack black market had reached his ears, and he declared war on our candy-coated utopia. Locker searches became a daily routine, and teachers patrolled the halls like snack-sniffing hounds. Jenny, the brave pioneer of our snack revolution, was the first to fall. Caught red-handed with a backpack full of contraband Twinkies, she faced the consequences of her snack rebellion. The principal issued a stern warning over the intercom, declaring that anyone caught participating in the black market would face disciplinary action. Jenny's detention should have been a warning sign for the snack enthusiasts at our high school, but rebellious spirits don't easily extinguish. If anything, her brief exile only fueled the fire, turning the snack black market into a game of cat and mouse. With Jenny temporarily out of commission, other would-be snack lords emerged from the shadows, eager to fill the void. It was like a snack-fueled arms race, with new players setting up their own underground operations in the wake of Jenny's downfall. Lockers that were once reserved for textbooks and gym clothes now concealed stashes of illicit treats, hidden behind a fortress of loose-leaf binders and forgotten gym shoes. The crackdown from the administration intensified, with locker searches becoming more invasive than ever, but they devised cunning strategies to outsmart the authorities. One girl even had fake locker stashes, sacrificial snacks strategically placed for the authorities to find. It was a guerrilla war waged in the hallways of our high school. The principal had tolerated the snack rebellion for far too long. The once light-hearted game of cat and mouse had escalated into a full-blown insurgency, and it was clear that drastic measures were needed to restore order to the halls of our high school. That's when he dropped the bomb, an ultimatum that sent shockwaves through the student body. Over the crackling intercom, his voice boomed, any student caught attempting to sell candy to their peers will face serious consequences, we are talking about potentially setting you back the year if you are caught. We are done with this snack nonsense. Consider this your final warning. The threat was simple but effective. The principal's decree sent a ripple of fear through the ranks of the snack rebels. Whispers of the new consequences spread faster than gossip in a small town. The rebellion had been successfully crushed but Jenny was the talk of the classrooms for that entire year. She went down as a legend for what she started. 